Hi, welcome to this new video about authenticating with um, OAuth in uh, IMAP and in SMTP against Office 365. Um, I've got a request to make an example with SMTP and not only with IMAP, but I uh, can assure you that the, the, the flow is always the same. Just to make everything a little bit clearer, I've created a small application that can explain everything in really, really clear way. Let's start with the simplest credential flow. It's the client credential flow. And it's a simple, simple way to authenticate against an identity provider, in this case, uh, Microsoft Office 365 or, or any Microsoft account, using only a client ID of your application and a uh, uh, secret. So I have already created an application in my Azure account bound to an Office 365 account, and I've got um, authentication, and in authentication, I've put all the redirect or URL. Um, I have created the API permission, and these are all the API permission you need. IMAP access as user, offline access to keep access, open ID SMTP send, and this is important if you want to send email uh, as a user. IMAP access as app to perform the client credential authentication and being able to impersonate um, um, a user as you saw in a previous video, and the mail send. So I have my application up and running and I can test simply creating a uh, testing authentication with IMAP with client credential flow. I am already logged in in this browser with an account on a test um, at, on a test tenant. And I can generate IMAP client credential flow link and what happened it I am already authenticated and everything gets okay. If you look at the console application in ASP.NET Core, I indeed have authentication. And that's exactly how I've done in the previous example. But in this new example, I've made a more useful example because I've tested and so result of accessing IMAP with so out for uh, this address it's I'm up login, it's okay. And then I've done the request for token. So what happened behind the scene is I've called this URL with a post, and these are the parameter I've specified in the post. So um, a client secret that is hidden and a client ID. Those two parameters are the only two parameters needed for authenticating uh, the user. And these are the scope. I want only the outlook.office365.com.default, and that is described uh, in the in my blog, and that's described in the um, official uh, official Microsoft link that document the whole process. And the grant type is client credential, meaning that it's a single request, and the server answer with a token. I have no refresh token. I have no ED token. I have only my access token. And with the access token, I've created the XO out true token to authenticate with IMAP and everything is okay. Sadly enough, I cannot use the very, very same code to use to access SMTP. So as an example, I'm trying to do the very same thing on SMTP and I am logged in, I'm simply requesting a token, and I'm trying to authenticate with SMTP against my Office 365. And as you can see, it needed um, more time, and I will end with an error. And the error happens because if you read the documentation, it exactly tells you, as per current test with SMTP OAuth 2.0 client credential flow, with non-interactive sign is not supported. So the problem is um, it is not supposed to work. And that is because there is no need to have this kind of flow because, you know, basic authentication will not be deprecated as for IMAP. So you can continue to use SMTP with basic out. So there is no need to support client authentication. So you cannot use this kind of OAuth flow. 
So you, you, you can use the client credential flow only for IMAP, as you saw in the previous video. But you can use the code flow to use IMAP and SMTP. And which is the advantage? The advantage is you can generate a link, okay? And that's the link um, I've made in this page, a uh, debug log, login link. It's the very, very same link you saw up here, but I've dissected with all the parameters. So this is a uh, response type code. This is a code challenge flow in which I uh, ask for a lot of uh, scope, open ID, email, offline access. And this is important because it will allow me to refresh the token for a long time, one or two years, I don't remember exactly. Uh, access type offline, and that's uh, important, and state code challenge, and this is standard O outflow. So this is the dissection of this login link. So every user can click this login, and since I'm already logged with a user, what happened is my identity provider, so Office 365 answer redirecting to this URL. And this URL contains a code. I can use this URL to finally make a request in the token endpoint with the grant type authorization code, specifying the original code that the IDP sent me. Uh, my code verify, it's a Pixie proof of key exchange protection, client in the client secret. And in this time I got an access token, I got an ID token, and I got a refresh token. And it's important because these are pretty much valid JWT token that identify a user. So you can generate this link in your application and each user can click this link and give to your application the, the, the right to access their email. So now that I've generated a token and I have it in memory, I can test IMAP. In a press test IMAP, I have a breakpoint, but the the result is, okay, result of accessing IMAP with XOAUT2 for Alcamfer, blah, 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 it's okay. So the software uses, uses the ID token to understand which is the email of the user that generated the token and then uses this email as well as the access token to generate the XOAUT token to access the IMAP folder. So this is important because I have an example in production, an application where each user can uh, click this link and give to my application the right to access their um, email. So I can store securely all this access token and refresh token and so I can continue accessing the email of the user. And if the user wants, they can simply revoke the authorization to my application, and now my application cannot access anymore the email. So that's the advantage of using OAuth. Now for the interesting part, um, accessing SMTP with, with code flow. So I wanna be able to let user send email with my program. So you generate a code flow link as for the previous example. And this is the link that the user will click. And the user will click, the user is already logged. And the difference uh, from the previous examples is now I've used the JWT token handler helper class that helps me to parse the ID token, finding the email claim and understanding automatically from the token, which is the email this token is um, connected to. So now, I have a valid token for that user. So I can use that access token as well for refresh token, if I need to refresh the token, if the token is expired, to send email. Now I can test everything, telling to my code to send mail with SMTP and the actual token I have in memory. If I press the button, I simply um, grab the model and it's an in-memory token. I've not stored it in any database. If you need, you need to store securely in some database. And now I have a try, send, test email. Um, and it's, it's a very, very simple routine because the routine is absolutely equal to the IMAP. You create an SASL mechanism out true with the from address and the from address is taken is taken, uh, directly from the ID token and the access token. Now I create an instance of the MailKit SMTP client, and then I can connect against the smtp.office365.com import 5867 
with the secure socket option auto, okay? And now I can authenticate the sync. And if everything is okay, the code continue. And so I can create a my message and send the message. So I can just press continue and uh, it, it, it tell me, okay, it tells me, okay, mail sent. I can go to my email address and here is the email. So to recap, even with S SMTP, you can use the very, very same technique you use with IMAP and I show you again. You generate a link and this is how the link is generated. It's a standard link to authenticate with OAuth2 and Codeflow. When the user click the link, it got redirected to the real identity provider. If the user is already logged, it automatically returns with an authentication, with, with a code that your software should use for doing another POST request, server to server, against the token endpoint to grab a token. And once you have a token, you can create a simple so out true token that can be used to simply send the email. So at the end of the example, you can generate this link for a lot of users so your program can securely store a lot of token and can use those token to send email on behalf of the user. Or with the very same token, you can use the token to read the IMAP folder of those users. The important thing you need to keep in mind is always use right scope. This is the scope for SMTP, outlook.office.com slash MTP send. And this is the Outlook IMAP accesses user all. It's for IMAP. And remember, you need to have these two uh, permission to be, in, to be set on your API permission of your application in your Azure portal. And now everything uh, works uh, like a charm. I hope this video was useful to you as the previous one.